So we left off with, uh, we'd put a RFID reader in the scene and we're gonna manipulate the RFID reader uh, or at least uh, read the values uh, from this the tag on the side of the box, uh, RFID tag. I'd cleaned up my notes a little bit and uh, the general info state of uh, state control. Uh, again, likely you don't need that for mini project one. Uh, and I'm not saying you need any of this for mini project one, but, uh, but you, you will encounter the use of uh, certainly some of the aspects of manipulating uh, the RFID reader. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do before I even do uh, get started with the readers, just put a, a note down. So uh, if I walk away and return to it, uh, I know what I was doing and what the area of the control was for. Um, so we'll just RFID uh, reader one control. And I might update this later. So the RFID reader could actually read and write to the uh, tag that's on the side of the boxes. Uh, there's also a tag on the side of the palette. If you were to take a palette and drop it down, you'll find a, a tag on it. Um, so for the uh, control, uh, to start off with, I'm literally going to take uh, everything that I have available and uh, put it down on the control I.O screen so that we can see what each of these uh, tags do. And then uh, I'll try to line this up so we can at least uh, switch back and forth between the, the documentation and the controller. So looking at the documentation, we can see that uh, the RFID reader number command that I could set a command to execute. And right now what I want to do with it is I want to be able to execute the uh, write data command. The, um, so this is the reader number command. I have to provide a source to it. And uh, in this case, I believe the number was three to write the data. So for the source, I'm gonna click on this. I'll put a three in, and then uh, I'm gonna feed that value into the reader one command. So when the scene starts, this block is going to get a three uh, and if we wanted to, we could chain uh, blocks together. Anything after this uh, is also going to get a three, assuming we don't do any manipulation of it. But um, so the next, uh, next thing is the uh, reader number execute command. So it's a Boolean. Um, just double checking that. And I'm going to provide a source and likely you're not going to do this, but this is a good way of troubleshooting what's going on. I'm going to provide a source where I actually have to press the button. Um, and likely in your scene, um, you're going to end up providing that value in through either uh, manipulation of, uh, of the blocks before it or potentially uh, provide it directly in through uh, a sensor or anything that provides a Boolean value. Um, so we are able to control the execute, uh, the reader number index. So I have to uh, provide a, a location to store the, uh, the value that we're feeding into the RFID tag. And uh, based on the documentation, it says it takes an integer, plus we can see it here. Um, so I'm going to store it at memory index one on this tag. So each tag has a set of memory indexes. Uh, looks like we could go from one to that many. Uh, one. And uh, we could store values at each of the uh, different locations. Uh, they're literally different physical tags. So each physical tag would have its own set of memory indexes. Uh, so the RFID uh, reader number write data uh, for right now, the data to write to the tag. Um, so we've set that the command uh, ID. Sorry, uh, we've set that. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of the, <laughs> the way the documentation is structured. Is just trying to read along, but uh, the status is, is something that's interesting. We're probably going to want to see the status. And in this case, it's, uh, it's not a, a source, it's an output. So um, we're going to take it and uh, we could store the the output in an integer 
actually the the outputs just going to be rendered on the screen um, so we'll at least see what the status is and then uh, the uh, read data so to we could uh, read the data in from a tag for right now we're just going to write the data out uh, so now that we've gotten that far I'm going to play the scene and I uh, actually want to see I'm going to turn the sensor tag on and then I want to see the sensor range so I could see that my RFID tag is within range that's great uh, and uh, I'm going to tell uh, the reader to execute the command in this case I'm telling it to execute the uh, write command and uh, it's going to write some data out um, so press stop here and the question is well what were we going to write out uh, so reader number write data and I think what I want to do is uh, also have that tag uh, on my scene because I want to be able to write some value so I'm going to attach a numerical value for the input and I'm just going to have it write out 999 I'm going to run it again uh, it's uh, it wrote the command and the status is zero uh, just to prove that it actually uh, would change the status if it wasn't uh, within range I'm going to move the box uh, I'll uh, try to write the data again it says the status is one and looking over to the uh, uh, to the documentation I could see error no tag so in fact it was working uh, and the other way that we could prove that is uh, we'll stop let's play again say okay we write the data and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take in this case I'm gonna take the same RFID reader um, but we wouldn't necessarily have to likely wouldn't do that in mini project one because we have multiple readers on this uh, scene but uh, in this case I'm just going to take the uh, same reader and I'm going to uh, have it write the output to uh, memory here and the other thing that I need to do so now I have the reader one command I had set to three so the scene is is running right now I'm going to change that to uh, two to read the data in so now I'm setting the uh, reader one command to two. I'm going to have it uh, execute the command. I can see the reader status was zero. And in this case, I could see I uh, read in the value of 999. So that's uh, an example of just using a single RFID tag.